this poor old vehicle was destined for the wrecking yard. The trip up the Cape where it took me to the top of Australia for the very first time was almost seven years ago. Ever since then, I've always wanted to restore this old vehicle that was destined for the bin back to her former glory. From Wrecker to Restore, this is going to be one of the most ambitious projects we've ever taken on. I can't wait. I want to take it from a pile of old, rusty, tired panels and worn out parts and turn it into something like this. A show car spec, period correct, work of art that's been something I've dreamt about ever since I first drove it to the top of the country almost seven years ago. It's finally time to hook back into the build and we're going to be doing all the panel repair, rust repair and body work. You might notice, I'm not in my shed anymore. I'm back down in South Australia at my good mate Damo's place. This is where we raptor coated the pony last year and in this shed is where we're going to be doing all the panel repair and rust repair to show you guys at home that you can have a crack yourself. First up, come with me. I'll show you everything in here. So you might notice that the chassis is looking a little bit bare at the moment, a little bit more work to do there. But the main thing I want to show you, I've gone and bought another Hilux. <laughs> I think I have a problem, but this is a 1980 two-wheel drive Hilux. I bought it mainly for parts for a couple of reasons. First up, this little badge right here, it's an SR5, which means it got a few little extra mod cons that that old Luxie didn't get. And there are a few Hilux nerd things here, bear with me. But for example, the dash on this is actually, the top of it isn't the top of it's really rough, but the center section of the dash is wood grain on the SR5s and it's remarkably in good condition. So I'm gonna take that, put it in that. The other thing is this split rear window. SR5 Hilux has got a split rear window. Non-SR5s didn't like that one. So I'm hoping this will fit in there. But the main reason I bought it is because of this tub. Now, you're probably thinking if you've watched any episodes on the RM46 before when I was tinkering in the shed at home, I already have a tub. Why have I bought another one? Well, you probably also noticed how fed that one was. I put a lot of hours into it, getting it ready. And to be honest, I just ended up chasing my tail. I was spending hours and hours and hours on it doing rust repair and wasn't really getting anywhere. Got to the point where I really had to weigh up if it was worth actually restoring it or if I was flogging a dead horse. Then this one came up and what's amazing about it is there's pretty much no rust in it. There's plenty of surface rust, but there's not any real bad rust, particularly in the floor. The floor is actually in quite good condition. Although some of you at home will know that the two wheel drive tubs and the four wheel drive tubs were slightly different, mainly in this area here. This is the wheel arch and on the two wheel drive is a little bit different. It didn't have flares. On my other tub, the flares were actually in good condition. It's probably about the only thing on that tub that was. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of work to this wheel arch to make it clear the bigger tires. And then of course, I'll be putting the flares from my other tub on it. Apart from that, once that's done, the plan is we're gonna be pulling this off and we're gonna put it on this chassis over here because the previous owner actually, I think, put some custom mounts on it. So we've gotta check that that tub fits nicely on this chassis. After that, we can pull it back off and then we're gonna be doing all the bodywork, showing you guys at home that you can have a crack at a project like this yourself and I cannot wait to get into it. Righto, enough talking from me. Let's get on the tools. Helping me with this project in the shed are my great mates, Damo and Sam. Damien is an extremely knowledgeable, salt of the earth kind of mate who has spent years lovingly restoring old vehicles back to their former glory. He's one of those blokes that the more you spend time with him, the more you learn. Sam is the quiet achiever. He lets his work show just how capable he is on the tools or on the end of a spray gun, and is always the first one to offer some help no matter how big or small the project is. I couldn't ask for better mates to be working with on a vehicle restoration that means so much to me. A handy tip before tackling a project of this size is to throw a bit of penetrant spray on all the old bolts you're gonna be undoing the night before to help get them off. Although sometimes that doesn't always work if the bolts really are seized, in which case heating the nut with an oxy torch like this can help it to expand, which can make it easier to remove. If you don't have an oxy, a blow torch can also do the job. Whilst the boys hook into that, I'm outside removing the two front tray mounts off the chassis from the vehicle to make room for our donor tub. This vehicle originally had a tray on it and the previous owner made two front tray mounts to support the tray. Also, a handy tip if you're grinding like this with a hoodie on, tuck the cords into your jumper so they don't get caught. I very quickly remembered to do that after a few minutes on the grinder. <laughs> Safety first, eh? Well, 
Before you know it, the lads are ready to lift the tub off the parts Luxie and test fit it onto the chassis of the Red Dog. Those mounts should be pretty easy to put on there. There's heaps of room to... Yeah, they will, yeah. Pack them on. Super Tura. Done. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you're not going anywhere. You're here. Now that we've test fitted that the tool drive tub fits, next thing is we're going to wheel the Red Dog in to the shed and then we can start stripping the panels. Oh, the brakes are stuck on, it's really hard. We can start stripping the panels and then we can start on the rust repair. <laughs> yeah. You've probably seen all these glad wrap bags around. I have mentioned this before a few times, but it's so important that I'm just gonna mention it again. Each time you take the bolts out, for specific things, just mark what they are and put them away. That way they're safe and your future self will thank you when you go to put the vehicle back together. So I've got a few extra ones for the guards, any little bits we take apart, very important. We're cracking on with stripping the interior. The roof lining is completely fed and perished, so the best thing to do here is to just cut it out and we'll put a new one in when the time comes. Everything else is bagged and tagged and kept together. On older vehicles like this, new replacement parts are pretty hard to find. So it's a smart idea to hold on to everything as much as you can until the build is complete, until you know what you can replace new. While the vehicle's getting stripped, it's now time to start getting all the panels ready to be panel beaten and get body filler on them in areas that need it. Now, the process that I'm gonna be showing you on this guard is exactly the same on the rest of the vehicle. So once we do this, we're gonna be repeating this process on everything else. The reason we do it that way, get all the panels ready for all the panel beating that comes afterwards and all applying body filler and stuff like that is it just helps streamline the process a bit more. The idea being that once you get all the panels ready, then you move into all your panel beating and you can kind of work your way around the vehicle. And while one section's curing that you've just done, you can work on the next section, the next section. It kind of just makes it a bit easier to get it all done, if that makes sense. So let me take you through the steps involved. Now, again, this process is the same on the rest of the vehicle. So first things first, I'm gonna pull off all the little bits and pieces like the indicator, the badge, the inner guard, this little flare. Once all that's off, I'm then gonna go over it by hand just with a sanding pad. Now what that'll allow for, you're not stripping all the paint off by hand, you're then gonna come through, once you put some gloves and some safety glasses on of course, because this stuff is nasty, some paint stripper. And you basically, I'm gonna apply that onto the guard and by sanding it, what that'll allow is for the paint stripper to work its way in and just help lift up the paint and get it off. After that, I'm then gonna go over it with a scraper, help scrape off that paint stripper. Once most of it's off, I'll take it outside and give it a pressure wash, get all that paint stripper off. Then I'm gonna bring him back in. Once the guard comes back in, I'm then gonna give it another sand, just a light sand. And once I do that, then I'm gonna apply this stuff. Now, this is phosphoric acid. And what that's gonna do is really clean the panel, make sure it gets it nice. But it's really important that once we apply this, we then wash it off again. You definitely don't wanna leave some of this on the guard. Once I've taken it outside and given it another wash, I'll bring it back in and you guessed it, give it another light sand. But there'll be other bits of rust, like for example, in the front here, that I'm gonna need to hit with one of these. Now this is a little twist knot wire brush. You can get these pretty much anywhere. It's just an electric drill. Pretty much any tool you have in the workshop or a drill should fit this bit, but you can get these anywhere. And what that'll do is that'll just get into little bits of rust that might still be left over in the panel that you can't see. Once I've done that, then, you guessed it, I'm gonna give it another clean, and then it's time to hit it with Brunox. Now, 
Think of applying this as like insurance for your panel. The reason for that is what that's gonna do, because it's cold here where we're doing all the panel work, there'll be moisture in the air that you can't see that's going to be, as soon as you strip that paint back, that metal is then exposed to the air and it's gonna get a bit of moisture in it. What this will allow is firstly, it'll stop any of that moisture from working its way into the metal, it'll kind of protect it, and then it'll just set a good base for the panel to apply the primer. Once I apply the Brunox, then I can set that panel aside for about 24 hours. After that, the next day, I'll come and hit it with some epoxy primer. Now this epoxy primer will essentially seal the panel and that means after that, once that's cured, it's ready for body filler and any panel beating we need to do. That whole process, there are a few steps there, but that will be repeated on everything on the vehicle. So there's a bit to do, I'm gonna get into it. Step one, removing accessories. Why? So you don't damage anything you wanna put back on during the restoration process. Step two, sanding by hand. To allow the paint stripper to work its way under the old paint and lift it off easier. Step three, paint stripping. To get all the paint off back to bare metal so we can see if there's any rust underneath and to ensure we can protect the panel properly with Brunox and epoxy primer before it's resprayed. Step four, remove excess with paint scraper. Getting the bulk off it with stripper and a scraper makes it easier to sand later. Step five, pressure wash. This gets more of the paint off with high pressure and also helps clean leftover stripper off the panel. Step six, sand the panel again. To mechanically remove any surface rust in the bare metal and it also helps to sand paint that the stripper didn't lift. Step seven, apply phosphoric acid. It chemically reacts to the rust in the panel, helping to remove it. Leave it for a few minutes to do its job. Step eight, hand wash and blow dry panel. This gets any leftover acid off the panel once it's done its work, so you don't have any risk of acid on your panel before you apply the paint. Step nine, sand again with an orbital sander and a twist knot wire brush. The wire brush helps to get the rust out of the panel that the sander can't get. 10, clean the panel again with compressed air. Step 11, apply Brunox. This treats the panel against rust you can't see from moisture in the air and on the steel from the whole process. While we let the Brunox cure on the guard, we're gonna crack on with stripping the windows, doors, and cab off the rusty chassis. Removing window glass is actually pretty easy. It's a case of gently pushing the rubber seal back over the lip of the frame around the entire window. After that, apply a bit of gentle pressure from the inside and have a mate help to support it from the outside and she'll come straight out. Just taken the rear window out and you can see here there's a bit of rust. This is really common in old cars, in old windscreens and stuff where water will sit and won't run away. Rust, I like to think of as like an iceberg. Sometimes the bit you can see isn't as bad as what's hiding underneath. So we've found a little bit more, but for the most part, we haven't found any real bad stuff. That's obviously not ideal, but uh, the rest of the cab seems not too bad. We've still got more parts to take off though, so hopefully we don't find even more. And with the cab fully stripped and unbolted from the chassis by undoing the body mount bolts, it can then be lifted off. Damien's just gonna start working his magic on the roof of the cab and other bits and pieces in there. I'm gonna start stripping the chassis of everything. So basically I'm just gonna start at the front, work my way back, these old shocks are flogged and stuff, and I've got some nice new Tough Dog shocks and springs to put on the chassis once it's um, sandblasted. Since the cab is off, Damo thought it'd be a smart idea to check the underside a bit closer whilst it's free from the chassis. Old vehicles like this, particularly four-wheel drives, often rust out in the floor where water can collect. So this is an important area to check on your old project for bad rust. If you do find a fair bit of rust in your floor pan, often one of the best ways to fix it is to cut it out and use a replacement floor pan. A lot of old cars, you can find them online, but if you can't, your next best bet is a donor cab. Thankfully, the underside isn't in too poor condition. There's a bit of rust, but it actually seems okay. 
tell you what, talk about a huge day on the tools. What have we done? I can't even remember. We test fitted the tub, we stripped everything on the vehicle. Obviously the cab is now sitting up, resting ready so we can do more prep work to the underside, get it ready for sandblasting. We've got to strip more paint off the cab itself. We prepped the guards, we prepped the doors. I started stripping the chassis. We've got more to do on that tomorrow, but I'll tell you what, we've got a couple of hours left in the shed and tomorrow's gonna to be another massive day. I cannot wait to see this thing start to come together. All right, more to do. I'll catch you tomorrow. How good, it's another day and we're ready to hook in. Got heaps to do. I've got to finish stripping the chassis and the diffs. I'm gonna move him inside because it looks like it's about to rain and the boys are gonna finish doing some paint stripping on the cab that's not gonna get sandblasted in certain parts. We'll show you that in a second, but for now, let's hook in. Much to be done. So handy tip, if you're working on, or any vehicle, but rusty ones in particular, and you're draining the diffs, always crack the fill plug first because sometimes these can be seized and if you drain all the oil out and that's seized, you can't get oil back in there. Stripping all the driveline components is pretty straightforward. The main challenge on old vehicles like this is a lot of things are seized. But the best way to deal with it is to just take your time, use penetrant spray, or in my case, I had to cut a few old seized suspension components out. While I'm doing that, Damien's getting into those same steps for preparing a panel we showed you earlier, but this time on the roof. And you guessed it, the exact same process on the bonnet, doors, and guards. When rebuilding a car, this is a great example of what we're uh, really trying to avoid. So what we've got here is some old body filler underneath the paint. And uh, what's happened, you can see a, a good line of rust around there. And that actually was put on the day whoever put this body filler on, uh, put the rust on there. So what's actually happened is the body filler has been put on on a cold day by the look of it. Body filler uses heat to cure, so as it's uh, warmed up when it's been put on, the moisture on the steel's been trapped and that's caused rust. So this rust here was actually put on the day that the body filler was put on. So what we're going to do uh, to fix that is we're actually going to epoxy prime it, so treat all the rust. Uh, epoxy prime it, then we're going to put all of our body filler over the top of the uh, uh, epoxy primer and that way we'll avoid this. I was happy to uh, put some paint stripper on this because what's on this is what's called acrylic lacquer. Now acrylic lacquer really went out in the 80s. That was before non-genuine parts. So happy to see this is a genuine bonnet. Groovy. So because this is old acrylic lacquer, we need to give it a little bit more time, a bit more reaction time with the paint stripper. One of the secrets with paint stripper is to put it on nice and thick but give it plenty of time to do its job. So uh, one way of uh, giving it a bit more reaction time is to put a sheet of plastic over the top, keeps it moist. On the bottom of the doors, there's a bit of pitted rust in where the bottom of the seam is. The best way to get at that is with one of these sandblasting guns because it's hard for an orbital or wire brush to get in there. You can get one from pretty much any automotive parts store as well as the grit. All you need is a basic air compressor and some good PPE to use it. Just make sure you do it outside. And right on cue, the rain has rolled in, so we've moved everything inside ready to prime. 
Just mixing up the epoxy primer ready to get on the guard. Now, you might notice it's Raptor epoxy primer. And even though we're not Raptor coating this vehicle, this epoxy primer is brilliant for a couple of reasons. Firstly, a lot of automotive panel shops and even industrial sandblasters use this as an epoxy primer because once it's cured, it goes really hard and really protects that panel. Why is that good for a restoration project like this? Well, if you're working by yourself in the shed and you know you're working on it every couple of weekends, once you get that panel in primer, you might wanna set it aside, leave it for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months while you attack other parts of your project. And this will just really seal and help protect that panel so you can come back to it and it'll be good to work on. The other reason it's really good is because it's got real good anti-corrosive properties. What does that mean? Well, basically, what it's made of is brilliant at protecting against moisture, and that's what you want for a primer, an epoxy primer on a panel. So for now, I'm just gonna finish mixing this up. I'll add the hardener, get it in the cup, give it a mix, get it in the gun, get it on the guard, plenty to do. Another really important thing is when you're adding your primer to the gun, make sure you use a little strainer like this because sometimes there'll be little lumps in here that uh, might not have mixed with the hardener and a lot of the time, if you don't strain it out, you might even accidentally put that onto your job and then when you finish everything, there'll be these little dots and that'll be basically those little lumps that haven't gone off, they haven't mixed with the hardener and then uh, they'll be in your final job and you'll be able to see it. So just get yourself one of these and strain your primer into the gun. Well, there you go, that's this guard prepped, ready for the bodywork. So remember, we started with stripping all the paint off, then we gave it a sand, then we acid washed it, then we sanded it again. Then after that, and it was clean, we then applied the Brunox, let that cure, and then put the epoxy primer over the top. So now this guard can be set aside and it'll be ready for all the panel repairs and rust repair in a couple of weeks time. The other advantage of getting it to this stage is now you can really clearly see all the bits on this panel that we'll need to repair. For example, there's a little dint here, there's a dint there, there's a bit of rust in the bottom of the guard there. All those bits and pieces are much easier to see. Now remember, that whole process remains the same for everything we've stripped into bare metal. So the bonnet, the doors, the guards, the roof, we'll get to this stage in primer, and then we can start on all the bodywork and rust repair. But it's looking pretty nice so far. Just got the rest of the vehicle to do now. So a real handy tip that I picked up from my good mate Damo. If you are using one of these twist knot wire brushes and there's sections of rust that are a little bit more pitted and they're a bit harder to get to and the wire brush isn't quite getting there, what you can do is this is an old 1 8 drill bit and we've just flattened the edge off and that'll just help to get into the sections of rust that you'll miss with this. Where this is real handy, for example, around a windscreen where there's rust in those little corners and you can't quite get a wire brush into it, this will work really well. Currently sorting through all the bits and pieces that we've stripped off the vehicle, and it probably looks like uh, a bomb site right now, but uh, there is a method to my madness. So a couple of these tubs are gonna be staying here. This one's got the wiring loom, door trim, other interior parts, the blower motor and stuff like that. And this one is a whole bunch of trim bits and pieces and all the little nuts and bolts that we've bagged and tagged. And then up there is the bench seat, the steering column, and the dash. They'll sit up there nice and safe until we do the reassembly. And then this box here are all the bits and pieces I'm gonna be taking back to Sydney. For example, the steering knuckles and hubs, uh, the brake master and booster, clutch master, rear axles, all those other bits and pieces I can start rebuilding at home and I'll bring them back down with me when I come to uh, tow the vehicle back because that way 
they'll be all nice and rebuilt and I can just smack them back on the uh, housings when we're ready to go. So should be pretty good. For now, I've got to tidy up the rest of it and uh, get it squared away. We're up bright and early to get a head start on loading up the trailers to get the chassis, cab, and diffs down to the sandblast. Oh, not going anywhere. Righto, so we've just dropped the cab and the chassis and all the other bits and pieces down here at Trans Tainers Sandblasting in Wingfield. Our mate Davey's gonna crack into a bit of sandblasting on it, but come with me and I'll show you. So obviously we've got front and rear housings, other bits and pieces from the diffs, the uh, spring plates and stuff, and the chassis over here, and of course the cab. Now, a lot of people don't really like getting their stuff professionally sandblasted because they reckon it's quite expensive, but they do a really good job and it's not too bad when you consider We've done all the legwork, stripping the cab, getting, getting it all ready so that the sandblaster can come in and do the bits he needs to and then it'll be ready for repairs. He's not going to do the whole cab, so he's going to be doing underneath the floors in the engine bay and other little bits and pieces. He'll leave the in, inside of the cab, won't do that, and then after that it'll be in primer. And remember at the start how I said once everything's in primer you can really see all the bits you need to repair. That's what we'll be able to do after that. So in about a week's time we'll pick the uh, body, the chassis and those diff housings up and we'll be able to see all the little repairs we'll need to do on this. Start doing them with body fill and any rust repair and then the next part of the project which is getting into the fun stuff. So I can't wait to see what this looks like once it's in primer. And tell you what, it's been a big week getting this all stripped. I'm pretty keen to see the next stage. And down there, I reckon, boys. How good's that? Ready to go, thanks, boys. Well, I'll tell you what, it has been an epic couple of days. We stripped the cab, got it uh, prepared, ready for primer, and then next episode, we'll be looking at all the rust repair and panel repair. In the meantime, we're gonna start on the tub and get it to the same level, because remember, that process that we showed you of preparing the panel, that's pretty much gonna happen to everything on the vehicle apart from the sections that are getting sandblasted. By the way, if you're liking what you've seen and you wanna know any little tips and tricks, for doing something like this on a project of your own, leave it in the comments below and we'll make sure we cover it in the next episode. Apart from that, you might have guessed we've got plenty more work to do. Keep an eye on the channel and all our social media pages for more on my 1982 Red Lux Resto. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.